Four games, four goals, zero conceded, 10 attempts on target, and an average expected goals rating of 1.24. But have they got a real chance this time? The exchange markets have gotten priced 3.15 for the tournament, indicating an implied chance of 31.7% to win. But has the market got it right? Can England win the Euros? The last time England didn't concede a goal in the group stages of a major tournament was back in 1966 when they lifted the World Cup. Now, Jordan Pickford's done a blinding job maintaining the clean sheet so far, but is this England squad on a similar level? Let's take a look at the data as I share my opinion as a professional sports trader. So Euro 2020 kicked off on the 11th of June, and since that time, there's been 123 goals and 44 matches, producing an average goal stat of 2.8 goals per game. Ahead of England's first match, their probable chance of winning was just 15.6%, considerably lower than it is now. Croatia were defeated 1-0 in England's opening match with Sterling securing that 57th minute goal, his first of three in the tournament so far. And he's been a blinding force for England, providing some quality finishes to high-paced attacks ever since. No doubt that first goal was an early confidence booster for both him and the young side that set him up. It didn't appear to be a comfortable victory overall, but Croatia were quite clearly outplayed with a very average XG of 0.54 in comparison to England's superior 1.5. Locking horns with Scotland on the 18th of June was a frustrating experience, I have to say. I think it's fair to say that fans were disappointed at Wembley and England were unfortunate not to score at all with six attempts on target and an expected goals rating of 1.67. Looking at the numbers, it's obvious that we were the dominating team. Okay, we had the numbers in the right areas where it mattered. However, Scotland did manage to beat us on the number of block shots and work rate within, within the match, whilst disconnecting the flow of play with so many fouls. A nil-nil draw was enough though, sending the jocks home without their boogie boogie. Well, excluding this young Scott that had his five minutes of fame in the media. Four days later, Sterling struck again, this time in the 12th minute against the Czechs with that close range header. Now, you may have seen my blog post about it, but I thought 1.61 was just too big pre-match. And it worked out quite well in play with two nice opportunities popping up minutes apart. From a betting perspective, you could see from the activity in the marketplace, it was stalling and the market was expecting a goal. Goal. The match against Germany looked wide open on approach and to be fair it wasn't much different in play. Both teams wound up with an expected goals rating of 1.33, the highest rate in England is afforded an opponent in the tournament. Now fortunately for England, Lady Luck favoured them on that day. After Jack Grealish came on, the tempo picked up and Sterling and Kane made it 2-0 at the business end of the game, leaving the Germans nowhere to go except home. As I expected, it was a cagey start, making a relatively low risk trading opportunity early on. The overreaction strategy mentioned in this YouTube video also provided cash grab in the second half. Now, past results are all well and good, but where does this leave us going forward into the future? We face Ukraine on the 3rd of July in Rome, and England won't have the support there from the fans that they have elsewhere, although the wisdom of crowds suggests that there's a 69% chance of winning on the Betfair exchange. That's a price of 1.45. The numbers rarely lie. We're heavy favourites and with good reason, the two teams are on completely different levels. However, I don't think England have played up to their potential just yet. You have to remember, we've got some of the highest value players in the world. Some of the previous games should have been light work for Southgate's men, and in my opinion, they'll need to pick up the tempo going forward if they want to take the outright win. They've played well, grinding down the opposition systematically in the preceding four matches, although things are likely to get a lot tougher from the quarterfinals onwards. The Ukraine have scored six and conceded five from four games, creating an average XG of 1.66. North Macedonia really allowed them to bring up that average considerably though, so it's not worth paying too much attention to. Ukraine struggled against Austria and the Netherlands in the group stages and went into extra time with Sweden in the last 16, which should indicate this next match should be a simple affair. Assuming 
England defeat the Ukraine, they'll then go on to play Denmark or the Czech Republic in the semi-finals, where things are going to get undoubtedly uh, tastier. Yet, far from impossible. Overall, England is priced at 1.71 to make the final, giving them a probable chance of 58.5% of winning. Which begs the question, is football really coming home? Let me know what you think in the comments down below before smashing the like button and watching another video here in the end screen. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.